Right. Um, yeah. As of today, I am technically street homeless <clears throat> in the cold and rain. Um, because, um, yeah, the room that I was trafficked to, or council coercive human trafficking, as I like to say, um, the room that I was, well, initially it was just a, just a duvet on the couch. Initially it was just a duvet on the couch. The room that I had, put my voice down, the room that I had is still available. There is a room that is still free, a room and bed. Now, right now, uh, I haven't got endless funds for anything I'm street homeless but I am in a hotel room just for three nights tonight tomorrow night and uh, Sunday night and that's it and then I'm on the streets or I could just go and top myself on beachy head but don't bother calling the paramedics. Don't call the police. Don't call PC Ford and PC McCarthy. Because I don't fancy PC Ford, whose YouTube account name is Legend. Because they're all watching me. They're all watching my videos. Monique from the council. Oh, you're not going to put me on YouTube, are you? No, I'm not, Monique. I'm going to mention you though. Tonight, there is a room and bed available. Whilst lots of people born in this country are dying on the streets. And one of the girls in that property said, yes, there's a lot of human trafficking going on. So you, she uses the word human trafficking. Don't worry, my breath won't be so bad this time. <sighs> it's amazing, isn't it, that, uh, yes, Juliet has texted me to say they can't do this to you. Now, we know they can't. But the thing is, Juliet, you weren't there when I needed you. And I've been texting you this evening and you've been texting me, but it's too late. You weren't there when I needed you. And you haven't been honest because your mother, Darren said you were my friend. You said you were my friend. I thought you were my friend. But because you got your mother to come in with police and paramedics, I've got your laptop charger right now because we've both got an HP laptop. Because the, that vile thug PC Moyles was bullying me out of your flat, with the police and your mother as a result of that I've got your laptop charger and I've left some bits and pieces in your flat because they caused me so much alarm and distress and PC Moyles picks and chooses what he doesn't want to remember his colleague would not give me his name by law because they don't like to do that do you no you don't do you Eastbourne police before I was beaten and injured in A&E on my birthday, had my shirt ripped, as you can see here, uh, had my phone broken, had to have an x-ray afterwards. Before you put me through all that mental and physical torture, someone in A&E called out to me, by law, they have to give you their names. But PC Moyles' colleague didn't want to give me his name. PC Moyles decided... He didn't want to remember me from Eben's flat. Hmm. Leading up to my partner's arrest. But PC McCarthy reminded me. More than one of them have name called my partner. And under the Domestic Abuse Act, 
2021 Section 4, I should have a roof over my head. And Tina Chave of the Independent Advice Network, who falsely offered me help, why would I ask yourself a question? Why would I use thousands of pounds of back PIP money to self fund of all hotels for nine months for my safety, the Cavendish Hotel? Because I, this time last year, I wanted to use some of that money to actually dedicate a mobility, mobility scooter buy and dedicate a mobility scooter to my late mother's resting place so that the physically disabled could enjoy her resting place as a dedication to my mother. And I'm on severe disability. And you've put me in this position of PC Moyles, was there with his bully boy, his bully boy pal, and the elderly beachy head chaplain Peter said to me, they'll bully their way back in no they won't they'll run with their knickers up in the air and i'm talking about the males the big meaty males when a real criminal comes after them not a female rape victim who's actually single-handedly put her assailant two years in prison and 10 years on a sex offenders register no i'm talking about a real convicted dangerous criminal like the raging alcoholic Carly Bishop how do I know her name because it was on an envelope and at three o'clock in the morning she'd come out of prison threatening to beat me senseless and I saw PC Scott Franklin Lester senior he barged his way into the Cavendish Hotel to do a welfare check but they tried to criminalize an innocent, extremely law-abiding, vulnerable woman criminalise her for being suicidal on Beachy Head. Three hours after that criminal threatened to beat me senseless, he turned up with a fraud. Yes, well, that same one... Oh, she's in prison now. Oh, goody. Bit late, though, isn't it? When Sherelle Clark and Dion Clark were mugging the elderly for a second time because they had a previous conviction on the Isle of Wight, how do I know? Because I looked them up on the internet. And guess what? The lady whose name I cannot mention because she doesn't want me to mention it, so I'm not going to. And I'm not going to give the address of the place that I've just come from. But I recorded her speaking to Monique at the council on my behalf. I've recorded it. And she's saying, Ryanie's not an, an aggressive person. She's been asleep all day. She's not this. She's not that. And I know she's not entirely with it. But she's a woman in her 70s. And that's all I'll say. I would do an impression of her accent, but then that would give give it away. And then that would give PC Anderson something to laugh about. When are you guys going to grow up and take things seriously? There's only one police officer I have any amount of respect for. Police officer. He's a welfare officer and even I've got a problem with him. The rest of you. None whatsoever. No. Those who go along with this are just as complicit. You've got to choose your side. Okay, this is, this is about people's human rights, civil liberties and overall sovereignty. It's up to life in prison for malfeasance of office. And if you follow orders and you know what you're doing is wrong and you go along with it, or as PC Soph, the silly little girl, said, Ignorance is bliss. Is it now? Is it really? People died for our freedoms. The Magna Carta, common law, common law of the land, under the creator. Look it up. You see McCarthy. Do your research. Yes, I talk a lot of BS, don't I? Why do you watch me then if I talk BS?
Why would you talk to someone you can't stand? Interesting, very interesting. We're supposed to pray for our enemies, but there's someone more important that I need to pray for. My Iranian lady friend, Amira, whose husband has to go to hospital nearly every day in pain with his back. He's losing his brother. His brother's dying. And I'm in A&E unnecessarily because you lot, you lot are working with the council to put a woman on severe disability in prison for being suicidal when she, she was in supported accommodation. Six days before her mother died, I visited that hospital. My mother, I visited my mother in oncology. And PC Ford and PC McCarthy of Eastbourne Police. There are two PC McCarthys. You're both pieces of shite. Sorry. Forgive me, how should I? Abba Yahweh put your, I should have said at the start, put your head, head of protection around me. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. There's a panor panorama was on the TV just now about housing. Yes, they showed they showed Margaret Thatcher with um, the right to buy scheme. The right to buy. My mother bought my mother bought her house. My mother, my mother and father bought their house, the house that I was born into. But as as they were saying on Panorama just now, the council decided they wouldn't leave enough. Um, they wouldn't re um. Well, you know, leave, leave enough for us poor people, the social housing and all that. And I have to say, I felt so depressed. And the woman was crying, looking at her house that she bought in 1984 and her entire house, her entire council house has been made into tiny, tiny bedsits, tiny, tiny bedsits. I'd go mad. You know, that reminds me of the Cavendish Hotel. It used to be beautiful. It it was like the Grand Hotel. Me and Darren went in there when there was a um, a sauna and a uh, there's a program that deals with suicide and self harm on on BBC One right now. That's interesting. Right. Well, I'll quickly finish this and then I'll upload it. Um, uh, basically, um, what was I saying? So, um, the right to buy scheme for, you know, um, council houses, Margaret Thatcher. Yes, that's the, I, I was born into a council house that my parents bought when they came back from sea because they met at sea. But, um, yeah, this woman who bought her council house in 1984, um, it's all been made into tiny, teeny, teeny, tiny. And as I said, the Cavendish Hotel, it, they've done the same thing. It used to have, um, on the Maisonne floor, there was a sauna and, and a relaxing area where it was all dark with lighting for just relaxing. I think it was a sauna and a steam room, I'm not sure. Um, and a mini gym. And they've, what they've done is they've got rid of that and they've made tiny, they've got tiny box rooms that make you, that are horrible, that are like claustrophobic, no windows, they're boxes with no windows. They're really tiny and they're, guess what they're called? City rooms. And during Airborne, they charged me a, over a hundred, well over a hundred pound a night. The Cavendish Hotel is usually about £35 a night for a big room with a window. But during airborne, during the summer, raking it in, raking it in. At the property that I was at, I can't give anything away, but there's an old man, he's a Christian, who had a mental health breakdown. Although he's, I think he's Catholic, unfortunately, um, and he 
believes in purgatory. Purgatory is a pagan false false beliefs but basically he like me he worked in a care home and he was a cook he was a top manager he's um they've labeled him as schizophrenic because he said he hears voices but as we know better it's demonic so it's from the demonic realm it's just that the freemasons and the occultists who run the show like to label it as schizophrenia whereas we know it's general generational curses and demonic <clears throat> but i said no one has the right to say you're mad but do, is it any surprise is it any surprise that in a psychiatric unit they're criticizing him we're living in the last last days there's loads of people on youtube who are having rapture dreams even i had one otherwise known as the Hebrew word, the harpozo. No, no female police officer. It's not a rude word. It doesn't sound like a rude word. Rapture. Maybe in your sick mind. If you know so many of the Bible books, why don't you read them? Honestly. I'm I'm still I mean I've always had a relationship with the father. Trust me, he's going to I I still haven't read the Bible, but I'm picking I'm I'm working it along as I go along and I'm in the right place. And trust me, he's going to pour his wrath on you. I spent hours and hours on the phone to adult social care and do 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 and do 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 do. The power advocate never got bit back to me. By law, they have to provide you with advocates. That's what they said at the library. But they didn't. They terminated my calls. Woo! Yes, they're always terminating my calls. Oh, I had to. There are other people I have to talk to. Rubbish. Juliet, you said that. Oh, there are other people they have to talk to, Bryony. Well, Juliet, you weren't there when I needed you over losing this home. It's incredible, though, isn't it? That Grace Hill, housing needs specialist, whom I recorded hanging up on me at the Cavendish Hotel when Juliet came down to the hotel. She works for the authorities. Yeah, and there's a reason why I put your surname, and I would like to know how this vile troll found your name. How did this Daniel Brown, Dan Brown, find you? I decided to put your name up after all of this nonsense because I thought you're not being honest, and if your mother says you're not my friend, and this is how you're treating me, and Warrior Wales from the Police Abusing Powers community has said. If she's going to do it this once, she'll do it again. And he said that there were a lot of people in the police abusing powers community who basically want Bryony to take her own life. And he called it out and he was chucked out of that group. Warrior Wales, I, I'm with you and I like you. I like the sound of you. But did you report this to the police? They're inciting suicide and they're meant to be against the police. They might as well join them. But the wrath of Yahweh will be poured out in them. The number of times people have said to me, they'll get their karma. No, no, we're not using any new age falsities, not even Christian new age falsities. Let's get that right. We're keeping away from the whole pagan. That's right from the pit of hell. <coughs> the wrath of Yahweh will be poured out, poured out on them. <coughs> Put all of your trust in Yahweh, your Elohim, and no other, no other. But anyway, uh, the the I, I think I'm going to wrap this up now. Um, the old lady, I say old lady, she was in her seventies. I can't believe that she saw Sherelle Clark on the news. I think she's quite confused because she said she gave me the number for a law firm and it wasn't. It was an over 55s home. 
And when I bumped into her, she, I showed her what the police did to me. And she said, oh, you know, you've already showed me. And that's before I went into the property. So Juliet and I knew she wasn't quite with it without being rude. But um, this is the la lady from the temporary accommodation I've just come from, whom I recorded saying to Monique at the council, she's not a problem. And Mo Monique just said, don't put me on YouTube. As I said, Grace Hill from Housing Needs, I recorded that obnoxious woman hanging up on me at the Cavendish Hotel and emailing me to say that Belmore Road was adequate when I was actually attacked by criminals and Juliet supported me in an email to the LGO. And she's the same woman who's emailed me to say um, that... Um, we're discharging duty to you and you're completely homeless and we're not going to help you and you've got to find your own place. What do they want me to do? They want me to be suicidal so they can say, oh, yeah, because so, we're uh, brainies on the Eastbourne police radar. She's suicidal again. No, 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 no. can't believe these people have got children. I do feel sorry for the children. I feel sorry for the children. Can you imagine having a father who goes on someone's Facebook wall, who pretends to be against the police, has got a YouTube channel and is saying, no, 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 Juliet's saying this about you. Juliet works for the authorities. Tina Chave from the Independent Advice Network. She's my friend. And I'm so glad that you're homeless. I'm. I, I, you, you've got children, have you, Dan? You've got children, you're in your 40s, and you've got children, have you? Well, I can believe this Nikki Jackson on that much. That much I can believe. Can you imagine having a father behaving? <sighs> I tell my children, keep away from that strange man. Keep away from him. You should join the police, keep away from the police. There used to be a time when you'd say, don't talk to strangers. Or as my Irish teacher at school said, you don't say no to strangers, you say nothing. Don't talk to the police. We should change it from don't talk to strangers, we'll change it to don't talk to the police. Why, Mummy and Daddy? Because the police are now made up of criminals. Really, yes. Paedophiles, wife beaters, murderers. And they like beating vulnerable people, men who think they're men, but actually they're like girls with their underwear up in the air. Oh, no, I don't. I'm too scared of criminals. I know. Let's, let's go and get Bryony. Mm. They're like children in the playground. <laughs> they really are. They all talk to each other. They're like the demented ones. But this is actually worse. You know, this is worse than the bullying that I had when I was five years old in the playground. I'm not joking. When I was five years old, I was terrified because there was a boy called David Gilman. He used to lie on top of me. He looked like the Milky Bar kid. And... um he pushed me down in a concrete tunnel, gave me a, I had to have a plaster on my knee. And he used to lie on top of me and try and kiss me. You know what little boys are like. They always like kissing. And he terrified me. I used to hang on to the, the dinner ladies, you know, at playtime. I used to hang on to them like this. And I just can't actually get over how demented the UK police, well, Eastbourne police are these so-called men. That's why I don't have a boyfriend. That's why I don't want to be around men. That's why I don't have friends. I'm trying to find intelligent people. There's a level of vulnerability and they don't like my vulnerability because they're not used to dealing with someone like me. They want someone who's so scared they'll just shut their mouth. Oh, all she does is talk. All she does is talk. No, 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 no. Yeah, she talks. Um, she tells you 
as I've been reminded. As I, it's funny because when I was in A and E, I was letting the general public know their rights, and as a result of that, I knew there had to be one person at some point, one person who was going to speak up for me, and it was a young girl. It wasn't an old woman. I always think that it's going to be someone elderly. I make that mistake. It's because it's not always elderly people. Sometimes I should know because I was bullied by elderly people when I did care work. In fact, my own Edwardian grandmother, who was a teacher, she'd be 118 now. As a little girl, I had to tell my grandmother, who lived through two world wars and had been a te school teacher, Grandma, what do you say? Please, that was my dear grandmother who died when I was eight. It was actually a young person in A and E who called out to me. By law, the police have to give you their name. Thank you. And then PC Ford thought, right, coming with me. So PC Ford with your YouTube account, legend. <sighs> Like my bad breath, you can't smell it now. But I'm going to go and get myself sorted out. And uh, yes, in the meantime, I shall keep fighting, speaking the truth. And if you want to be a coward, go along with the lies. Go along with the what's it. Go along with it. And if I've got people from the Eastbourne Borough Council watching me, cheers, because everyone's going to know pretty soon, if not already. So keep spreading the Chinese whispers, as Rob from Eastbourne Police said. And I'll keep exposing the corruption as long as I'm still taking my last breath, having my last cup of tea, I will speak the truth. I don't drink, I don't smoke, I don't take drugs. and But when I'm in distress at your crimes, your crimes against me, your personal crimes against me, because you've got a lot of guilt, haven't you? That's why you have to troll me. Your personal crimes against me, they're being exposed and the wrath of Yahweh will be poured upon you. Cheers. So if I'm antisocial because I'm speaking up for myself, Grace Hill, housing needs specialist, obnoxious call handler, who really needs to get some training in PR skills at a basic level. At a basic level. I would like to see you have your bedroom window smashed. I'd like to see you. Sally Fisher from the Temporary Accommodation Team. I would like to see you have your bedroom window smashed and see you attacked in the bath by people, dangerous people who've come out of prison. And because I go and record residents from the Riverbourne House opposite, elderly residents supporting me, you don't like that, do you? So what do you do? You get someone from the council to come out to me. <clears throat> to issue me with a fraudulent section 40 something telling me, threatening me, causing me alarm, personal alarm and distress and telling me to stay away from them. Councillors failing to stop and correct the vulnerability of their constituents, which is what they're paid to do, paid from the public purse. And I put Hamira Javadi, the living man or living woman, under, on notice, under common law, 151 officer. Yep. Tears and goodbye. I shall speak my truth to the end and expose your crimes.